Hollywood. The place of glitz and glamour. Place where dreams are born. People go there every day trying to succeed. But what happens to the ones that don't succeed? This is a story about one of them. And how she will always be famous for being the lady in white. The ghost of the Hollywood sign. That's right. This week, we're going to talk about Peg and Swistle. Now, see, this case... She did become famous, basically, in afterlife. Because what she did. So let's go right into it. Let's dive deep into it. Peg was born on February 5th, 1908. In Port Talbot, Wales, UK. To parents Emily and Robert and Twistle. Her father, Robert, was an actor on the Broadway stage. And as Peg grew up in Kensington, London... All right, she knew one day that she wanted to be a star, kind of like most little girls do, you know, they want to be a star, or a princess, or a ballerina, she wanted to be a star. But now, see, Emily, her mother, this is where it becomes a little bit dark, because some websites say that she has died, others have said that she is, she abandoned Peg and her father, But I did find that she did abandon them. The father wanted nothing to do. Peg had nothing to do with Emily. According to his last will and testament, and I quote, Peg is the daughter of my first wife, whom I divorced, and the custody of my said daughter was awarded to me. I do not desire my said daughter to take any time in the custody or control of her said mother. You know, and I'm guessing that this is where Peg's first bout of depression actually started, was at this young age. Because, you know, that's how it is. I mean, I don't know the particulars about it. But it's all I can find, because this is such an old case. Okay, so Peg and her father left the UK and came to America in 1913. Um... By spring of 1913, Luck looked up for the family, and her father was starring in Broadway shows from Ohio to New York City. Um, I guess the father had remarried. I couldn't find too much about him, but I know that she had two half-brothers, uh, and I guess in December of 1922... They were traveling with his brother, which was a, where is it, Broadway manager by the name of Walter Hempton. So, (coughs) that same month, tragedy struck Peg and her two younger brothers when Robert was killed in a hit and run by a motor vehicle. Um, the good thing the uncle was there because that's who got custody of Peg and her two half brothers. So, uh, at this point, Peg, look, look, looked up for Peg, you know, she needed a little bit of good luck. You know, she got Broadway shows. Um, the little girl, there was a little girl in the audience with her mother. The little girl said to her mother that she wanted to be like Peg and Twistle and, that little girl grew up to be Betty Davis. So, at the age of 19, Peg fell in love with a guy named Robert Keith. Okay, Robert Keith, he was kind of shady. He had a, he, Peg didn't know, but he was married and had a six-year-old son. All right, so Peg left him. You know, she, uh, She took over, she went to Hollywood after the divorce was done. Peg's depression worsened, of course, because of this. But in 1932, her luck looked up because she had signed a motion picture contract with RKO and was set to star in 13 women. 
Now, I guess they had test screenings and the scenes that Peg was in were horrible. A few of them. So, because she was like a co-star in the movie, I believe. So, they decided basically cut her down to, I think it was like three minutes. I've never seen the movie. I'm just going on what I've read. Three minutes in the movie. And that killed Peg. That made her go over the edge and RKO decided to drop her as an actress. Now, on September 16, 1936, Peg was drinking heavily. Depression had set in. She felt like she wasn't good enough. Uh, so she told her uncle, which she was living with at the time, that she was going to go to a local drugstore and meet up with friends. All right. But this turned out to be a lie to the uncle. Peg made her journey. She had already made up her mind. She made her journey to the Hollywood sign. It took her all afternoon into the night. When she finally reached the sign, she found a maintenance ladder. The maintenance ladder was connected to the H. Now, back in the day, the Hollywood sign, it was also known as Hollywood Land. Uh, so, and of course, this is just hearsay for what I'm about to say. Nobody really knows the truth of what she did on top. This is speculative. Um, she said she climbed up the H. She waited a few minutes, and then she jumped. On the 18th, two days later, a, high, a woman hiking the trail found a coat, a purse, a shoe, and basically hiked back down, got to the nearest house, basically told the uh, owner of the house that she needed to call the police because something had happened at, by the Hollywood sign. Now, when the police got there, they collected everything. They found Peg's body. Uh, basically, they found the note that said, I'm afraid. I'm a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. P.E. Now, they published this in the paper. Because they, they were trying to figure, trying to ID who it was. So the uncle realized the initials P.E. stood for Peg and Twistle. Went to the police station. And claimed the body. Now. A day after he had claimed the body, Peg had gotten a note. That she had gotten the leading role in a play. About a woman who commits suicide. Which is sad. It, so her funeral was held on September 20th. Uh, lots of people came out for it. And then she was cremated and her ashes taken to Glendale, Ohio. Next to her father. This should have been the end for Peg. You know, let she should have rested in peace, but knowing what happened, it's not. It's only the beginning. Now, when people die tragically, it, they say they haunt the areas. So this is where the white lady... Um, the ghost of the Hollywood sign now starts. Now, what I'm about to t about to talk about is the sightings of Peg's ghost. Now, a couple was walking their dog along the Beechwood Canyon Trail of the park. Their dog began acting strange, whimpering, cowering behind them. Suddenly, a woman. Without a date, clothes appeared on the trail in front of them. 
appearing dazed and confused, she vanished in, in front of their eyes. So basically what happened was she's making herself known, I I want to think. I don't want to sit there and speculate. Um, another one was from a park ranger by the name of John Arbogast who claimed to have seen Peg's ghost on several occasions. He often most spots it when conditions are foggy. And it's often accompanied by Peg's favorite perfume. Gardenias. Um, most recently, there has been a thing on sci-fi called Paranormal Witness. Uh, called The Friends. The episode, I believe it's called. Tina, Allen, Brian, and Al, after a game at Dodger Stadium, decide to go touch the famous Hollywood sign. Now, the Hollywood sign is strictly off-limits. It is heavily guarded. Um, You're not going to be able to get up there. If you listen to this, please, I, I am warning you, don't go up there to try to see the ghost. It ain't worth it. You know, because you're going to get caught. They have helicopters and surveillance cameras, from what I understand. So, back to the group of friends. All right. Um, they jumped the fence and headed up on their way down. Back down from it, Brian slipped and fell part of the way down the hill. As he began to make his way back toward the others, he saw someone on the path walking toward him. It was a woman wearing a dress. Similar to the style of the 1930s, according to the story. Now, I have heard this story on many paranormal radio shows. Um, and do I think she haunts it? Yes. Because she, the way it is, you know, unfinished business, if you believe that type of thing. But, you know... They say her footsteps made no sound, that like she was gliding from the hill um there are pictures online if you want to look those up of what is said that she looks like uh, a couple of them I got were she she's wearing a veil uh but when she gets close to you she's missing her lips so all of exposed is her teeth and her eyes are pitch white uh but it is what it is when it comes to that kind of stuff. I mean, you're either a believer or not. Um, so that is the story of Peg and Twistle. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think she really haunts that place? Have you seen her? You know, you. I don't know if you can re remain anonymous. But I'd love to hear the story or see the story. Um, any kind of proof you have, maybe pictures. Um, do you think that maybe if someone tried to save her, she wouldn't have done it? Who knows? We will never know. None of you know, half of us weren't alive for it. Um, but I just want to thank you for listening to the first ever podcast. Um, I want to try to do this once a week. My next episode will be on George Reeves or the Black Dahlia. Um, I might have you guys chime in to tell me which one you think would be better. Black Dahlia has her own mysteries. George Reeves has a lot of speculatory things. But I would love to hear your comments back. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe. That's it for me. Talk to you later.